late night in a town that goes to bed early, one DJ sits alone in a seaside radio station. 30 seconds until you're on air, reading your live lead. Well, practically alone. There was the producer. It's hard to ignore that guy. The DJ's heart began to race because in just 17 seconds they'd be on air. 13 seconds now. 11. 7. 4. Hey there, Night Owls! This is Taylor, serving you a healthy portion of the best local music with a dash of the rest. That'll do. I've heard worse. The show's off and running now. Hey, I was so transfixed by your performance, I missed the last call that came in. It went to the answering machine. Can you check it? Hey, uh, Taylor. You don't know me, but I... I think you're supposed to help me. Uh, I know that sounds weird, but all week I've been having these, uh, uh these premonitions, I guess. Uh, and I was trying to ignore them, but what if they're important? <laughs> you know, so I thought, okay, if I need to act on these clues I've been getting, then I need a sign to confirm it. Then your show came on and you said, this is Taylor. And my middle name is Taylor. So... I think you're my guide. I'm gonna keep listening to you for more clues, so you just, you keep doing your thing. That guy reminds me of some of the crazy people I met at AA. This town attracts nuts like a cashew convention. Just then, without rhyme or reason, the DJ could not resist the urge to put the raptor's little left hand in, then out, then to shake said small hand all about. Coffee stains your teeth. Rick from Rick Roman in the morning's teeth look like rusted out oil barrels. Ah! I told Alice her kid wasn't allowed in here. You can thank him for that. Did you know Rick from the morning show and Alice are an item now? What do you got there? You want noodles leftovers? <laughs> Those might be over a week old. Yuck. Blue shoe guy pan. Now that's a dish. It's as good cold straight out of the box at 1 a.m. as it is when you order it. Oh shoot, it looks like I don't have any more commercials queued up. Until you get that new commercial recorded, I don't have anything for you to play. Look, you do your job, I'll do mine. Record the commercial and I'll get it ready to play. Seriously, are you just taunting? You're the worst. Nope. Just Oh no, what seems to be the problem? We're required to run an emergency broadcasting test today to keep our license. Only, we don't have all that newfangled, fancy, schmancy equipment you had at the station you came from. So, I need you to record the message yourself. Just turn to the white script, hit the record button when you're ready, and read it. Super simple. Even you can't screw it up. This is a test. Hey, wait. I just thought of something hilarious. Maybe try to do it kind of robot -y sounding, you know, like mechanical machine voice. I am a robot talking like a human. Okay, this is a test. Oh, and the, where it says beeps, just read those two. Our sound effects board is on the fritz, so really put some oomph into it, you know, like beep, beep. Beep, beep. Sorry, just one more thing. Don't feel tied to the beeps. Put your own spin on it, like, like, Wah, wah, wah. Or, ooga, ooga, or, neener, neener. Whatever you're feeling. Beep, beep, beep. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. If this had been a real emergency, instructions would follow the message. Beep, beep, beep. That was inspiring. Don't you go leaving me to take a run at an acting career now. Hey, Slugger. That's Mindy's. She 
Southeast African Sports DJ. Yeah, I arrived this morning. I, I don't know. Doesn't look regulation to me. I knew it. I knew there was an emergency. You've been guiding me all this time, giving me clues, and this, this just confirms it. I hear you loud and clear. Today is the day I've been preparing for. Just keep letting me know what I have to do. Whoa, you really got him riled up there. Man, this job is boring. Want to take a few calls? You could ask listeners to call in with the most interesting thing they've ever found. I'll have the clock count you in and tell them the best call this hour wins two all-day passes to Pinata Pete's. All right, Night Owls, in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking to various callers about the weirdest things they've ever saw. The best call this hour wins two all-day passes to Pinata Pete's. So be on the lookout. We've got some calls coming in. I'll patch them through to your phone. Most of the time they want to talk, but always hang up before you give your thoughts so they can't argue back. Hello, you're on the air with Taylor. Can you tell me the weirdest thing you ever saw? Because that's the whole trend that's going on or something. Oh, I'm on air? Cool. Well, I'm a beach comer. I have a metal detector. Um, I go search for treasure. Is she eating something? One morning, I found a case with a clue on it. It said something like, finding you is like finding a needle in a haystack. So, I mean, I figured it out. I'm real good at puzzles and stuff. I went to Haystack Rock and there were all these candles and flowers and a shovel with a note. And the note said, say yes. So I dug there and I found a jewelry box. The ring inside was the most expensive thing I've ever found at the beach. I sold it and I bought a nice boat. People are so stupid. We're actually calling from the boat right now. If you don't believe me, watch the sky over Haystack Rock. Do you see that? It's because I'm on a boat. Can you believe her? You're on the air with Taylor. What's the weirdest thing you ever saw? Raccoons are being tortured. I can hear them out there every night by the <laughs> tech building near Highway 7. And they cry, their little raccoon cries, and you can hear them behind the dumpster, and they're just bawling and crying and screaming, and you can hear it. Sorry, I tried to pre-screen the calls. She told me a story about finding herself. I tried to hang up on her, but she slipped through. Hello, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw? Hey, how's it going? Oh, great. How are you doing? So have you seen that show where people bid on storage units that are put up for auction? No, I haven't seen one of those. Yeah, there's these people who buy abandoned storage units when the owner is defaulted on their payments. I can't believe they can do that. These are people's personal treasures and stuff, auctioned off to guys in tank tops and gold chains and stuff. Anyway, I went to one, an auction, and I, I wasn't wearing a tank top or anything, but I did win a unit. Got it real cheap, because this one was sight unseen. They didn't let us I bet he lost his shirt in the deal. Actually, I made out pretty good. And there was like a thousand bingo daubers in the unit, and my aunt plays bingo. She's like really connected on the bingo scene, so I had a hookup. I sold all of them. The rest is gravy. Some troll dolls, little Some homies, Hello Kitty collectibles, that type of stuff. Yeah, it was a gold mine. I still got 45 wigs I'm trying to get rid of. All the same style and color. If someone wants them, uh, tell them to make an offer. Here, I'll, I'll give you my phone number. It's I'll 702 cut them off. No phone numbers. Never let them give out the phone number. Hello, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw? I'm getting tired of saying this. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Oh, no problem. Yeah, so I'm a driver for Uber. Been needing the extra cash, you know. So anyway, one night, I found this briefcase that someone left in my back seat. I thought it might be locked, but it was unlocked. So I opened it to try to figure out who it belonged to. I mean, I wouldn't usually, like, privacy and all that. Anyway, I opened it, 
and they were like hundreds of tiny sealable bags. Whoa! Asking what was in the bags. What was in the bags? Each little bag had hair in it, like little locks of hair with names on them. There were little labels in each with a girl's name on them. What the heck? That's crazy. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, and to top it off, there was like this zipped up pot in the case. I opened that and there were teeth, hundreds of teeth. Oh my gosh. Make a joke about the Tooth Fairy. Joke about the Tooth Fairy. Um, did the Tooth Fairy drop her bag on her way to her next child? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Anyway, I never found the owner. Ask him if he still has it. So do you still have it? If you're wondering, I still got it. Looking at it right now, it's beautiful, actually. I mean, it's beautiful, the things you Maybe can learn you about hang a person. Up. Cashew convention. People in this town are nuts. Maybe we should call it a night on the call-ins. Well, maybe one more. Can I take this one? I've always wondered what it feels like to take a call on the air. I never thought I really would after all this time. Do you mind? Oh, no, I don't mind. Go ahead. Hey, you're on the air. You're still taking calls on weird things people found? Yep. What you find, kid? Well, my second cousin asked me to house it once when he was traveling for work. While I was there, I looked through all of his stuff and... I looked in his closet, and I found this journal. He and my mom weren't speaking at the time. They were in the middle of this huge feud. So I started reading the journal, because I thought it was a diary or something. Maybe there'd be some juicy tidbits about my mom. But then I realized it wasn't really a diary at all. What was it, the journal? It was filled with letters to an imaginary kid. The first letter was 10 years old, and he wrote a letter at least a few times every week. There were hundreds of them. Like he was writing to the child he wanted, but never had. Oh, wow. What did the letter say? Do you remember any of them? Um, yeah. There was one I won't forget, because I was in it. Um, I actually have it right here. I wrote it down. <clears throat> it said... I saw my cousin's kid, Brian, today. He was getting ready for his baseball game. He's a nice kid. I think you two would have been good friends. I always wanted to play catch with my son in the backyard. I would have taught you my curveball. It's unbeatable. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't want to upset anyone. No, oh, sorry. It's just heavy. People don't think about what it can be like for men who don't have kids. Women tell people how they feel about infertility or miscarriages or things like that, but men keep it to themselves. Or write it in journals, I guess. So your second cousin never had any kids, still? No. Kind of wondered if this was a kid he made a bowl together, or if he had a kid out there somewhere, or gave up a kid or something. I never had any kids. I had an angry dad. I never knew what to expect from him. He never did anything with me. Nothing was ever good enough. I, I just grew up scared of him, hating him. But then as a teenager, I learned he had a mental disorder. I ran in the family and he couldn't help it. So I tried to stop hating him. But then I was scared of myself. What if it was genetic? What if I became like him and did that to some kid? I didn't. I'm fine, but I never had kids. I didn't want to take the chance. Yeah, um, so, uh, thanks for taking my call. <sighs> Put on a record or something. I, uh, I just said that on the air. wanted to be a dad. A few moments later. Hey, uh, I thought...
saw that sign. And it's a good thing we would have missed that turn. Thank you for that. And uh, now, no problem. Uh, now I see s'more beach signs. So I think I just keep going past the s'mores. What's your address there at the radio station? Now, um, I, two, I can't, four, I can't hear five. You. What, what'd you say? You know what? Never mind. John found a promotional map in the seat pocket back there. Turns out we're not far. Be there in a few minutes, okay? Did he say he's coming here? Tell him not to come here. This is private property. What? I hey, you can't come here. here. This is. I said I'll. I said I'll be right there. We'll see you in a few. He can't come here. What is this weirdo thinking? Did you lock the doors when you came in? Uh-oh, I'll, I'll check the back door. I'll shut the alarm. Maybe something bad happened here. What if they're the ones that I'm supposed to rescue? John, call 911! Go away! No, 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 wait, hold on, John, don't call. I, shh, I hear somebody. Hey, you there? You're okay? All right, good. Uh, all right, so here's the deal. I need your help. I'm on a mission to prevent a catastrophe. Uh, and your radio station has been telling me where to go, but now all I'm getting is just this static. So I need you to get back on air. Cool, please. I couldn't help you even if I wanted to. Our power is out. Our antenna's broken, and I don't have the transponder. I need to fix it. Well, maybe, maybe I can help you if you just let me in. Only... Hey man, I really need your help. I don't know who else to turn to. I think I did a really bad thing. What was that? What can you see outside the window? I see, I see, I see fire. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. A big explosion or something. Well look, maybe if your radio program can't lead me anymore, you can just tell me where to go, maybe. 
you draw me a pass on our map or something. Look, I've been trying to trust all the subtle things that I think you're speaking to me, but it would be easier if you just gave me like a full plan right now. We need to get rid of this guy. Tell him to leave. No, I'm not talking to him. You do it. You're the better speaker. Fine, I'll do it. Leave us alone. We don't want any trouble. We don't care what you did. Go away. Hey, isn't that where your wife went? No, yeah, Snorby. You don't know where that is? You don't know the jingle from TV? Come here for all the fun. Though we ain't got so much stuff, we've got some treats to eat. So come on down to Smore Beach. I, something like that. Nothing? Oh, come on. It used to be called Raccoon Beach. Oh, oh well, okay, well, thank you then, Radio Man. It, it used to be called Raccoon Beach. J John, 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 calm down. We're going to find her, I promise. But if the tower is out here, I'm not going to hear Taylor telling me where to go. So, look, do you know where to find a transponder? Don't just stand there looking dazed. I think there's a page from the parts catalog somewhere on the bulletin board. The faster you can get him out of here, the better. Tell him where he can get a transponder. Try at the piñata place. It's fine. I found the information back here. The transponder can be purchased at Carol's Corner, Wicker Furniture, and Radio Accessories Emporium. Carol's Corner. Yeah, no, I, I got it. <laughs> Carol expanded into radio parts, huh? That shop has everything. How is that old computer booting up? We don't have power anywhere else in the studio. Can you see what's going on with the computer? It's always been a little wonky. My natural language processors lead me to conclude that they don't really want your help. I deduce they were just trying to get rid of you. Nah, yeah, I know it happens to me a lot. You know, all I want is to help people, but instead, I don't know, it always seems scared of me. You know, I want Taylor to be different. I'm going to assume the best, Ted. Taylor hears and understands me. Taylor wants to help me, and Taylor has a plan. A plan to prosper me and not harm me. Plans to give me, you know, like, hope. And I don't know, the, the future. It may not seem like my trust in Taylor is founded now, but as, I don't know, as the great George Michael sings, you gotta have faith.